Welcome back to the Virgo channel. My name is Laura. If you're new to the channel, I'm going to do a general message. Obviously, for Virgo, though, cross watchers are more than welcome to watch. Just know that energy is fluid, so roles could be reversed. Always interpret the message as it best resonates with you. Take what you need, leave the rest kind of deal. Now, if you're also new to the channel, understand I like to look at everything. So I don't just look at what goes on on the surface, because a lot of times what goes on the surface is real. And so... It's not that it's not real. It's not oh, the person's not really coming from their true self. They're coming from a mask part of themselves. So I like to dive deep and I like to look at the spiritual blocks, the shadows, see how they play out those karmic themes within your experience. Because if it's energy that you just don't want to deal with anymore, you'll learn how to break that karmic cycle. If it's one that you that actually has potential, if it's a connection that actually has potential, you can actually shape shift your situation to create the reality that you want. See, it's our own spiritual blocks that get in the way of us manifesting the life and the life experiences that we want to have. That's why I like to do these type of readings. They're empowering, they're healing, and that means that they're transformational. All right. Now, if you want to enter into a free reading with me, you got to do three things. You got to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and write the word of the video in your comment bar. The word of the video is how spirit likes to likes to start the reading because the underlining energy is why everyone's doing what they're doing. It's based on a perception. Is it real? No. Again, we have spiritual blocks. It certainly wouldn't be. Um, okay, powerless. Like, obviously, that is a spiritual block of feeling like one can't do anything. And so that's actually a root chakra imbalance. And it's one that is, you're basing the person that I believe that you're dealing with. And just to keep, again, the story straight, you interpret the message as it best resonates with you. You, um, but I'm going to say that you're dealing with somebody that acts like they're powerless. They don't, they in in how to deal with you and how to fix the situation i feel like you've been in separation from this person for a while because they played a lot of games like they didn't need to push it to the extent this person when you met them i feel like was very cocky um you know people that are not coming from their true self they tend to either overcompensate or undercompensate so when you met this person they overcompensated because they feel so small about themselves that which is why they feel powerless because they're basing their life on their perceptions of what has transpired in their life and that is not really who we are so obviously we're not going to get good results from this so we have to look at the spiritual blocks to, in order to get the wisdom. And the reason why is because, like I said, I feel like the underlining energy to this person is that they act very selfish. And they do. It's like when we come from a survival point of view, we don't think about other people's feelings. And again, because we're coming from a place of fear, but it always leads back to the same energy, which is hopelessness. Because again, there's a lot of anxiety and worry that the person is perceiving like they're, what might happen, what could happen based on the past. So I feel like there's no movement within your connection. This is why we always want to look at the hidden truths because the hidden truths are not going to be the same as this energy. It's usually very contradict. It contradicts itself. And the reason why is because, again, the person has created an illusion and they've created an illusion because they want you to perceive something about themselves that's not really there. It's because, again, that's what happens when we don't like a part of ourselves. We detach, we disassociate from that part of ourselves. We reject it. And so I feel like your person continues to live out the same karmic themes within their relationships. It always ends in like, like drama, always like it's a toxic connection because it's not built on truth. So when we're not coming from our true self, our highest self, we're actually attracting people and situations to us that are really not in alignment with our true self. And then what happens is we try to keep up with that persona to the point that we lose ourselves completely. 
we grow so far away from ourselves, which means we don't even know what we feel anymore because we're so overstimulated. And this is the energy that I feel like the person that you're dealing with. This happens when there's severe trauma and that trauma has not been integrated. So let's look at the hidden truths because again, the hidden truths are not going to be the same as what you're seeing, which is makes it so frustrating because you're like, I feel like this person likes me, but this is how it's playing out. And it's like the person treats me like shit. And it's like, well, it's like, because they, they again, want to put you in that position to make themselves feel better. It's an unconscious act. And it's one that actually is inherited that a parent did that or someone of authority did that when they were younger. So it's again, it's a survival mechanism. This actually happens when we're around toxic energy that again, plays out as these defaulty character traits. We can't just stay angry. That anger builds and builds and builds, it builds. I mean, people don't just go and shoot a person. What happens is it starts with little things and it's like stubbing your toe in the same exact spot over and over and over again. Even though it's an emotional wound, it hurts. And it's one that is making us look at ourselves and we can't figure out what the issue is. So it creates a lot of anxiety because we're trying to figure it out instead of listen to the true self, the higher self, the God part of self, which only happens in the silence, only happens when we're losing ourselves in the creative, in the creativity and the art of life. And no matter what that art is, for somebody, it may be a hairdresser, for somebody else, they're, they're a, chef, a chef, for somebody else, they're a singer, for somebody else, everybody has their path so i feel you leaving me behind so again this person makes a self-fulfilling process and they're actually i'm feeling like they're also like and this is actually a good thing um and not if you get back together with this person but i feel like they're actually uh, gonna move i feel like they were stuck in fear so they didn't do anything they gave like nothing because that anxiety, fight, flight, freeze, stuck and stupid. There's a reason because the person's overthinking. They can't get out of their own way. So they're almost like watching the train on the track come towards them. That's what, again, a trauma does. You're stuck and frozen. Where the person that you're dealing with is stuck and frozen because it's happened before and they haven't handled it well because they actually do care see they wouldn't they have an emotional response unless they didn't care see that's the whole thing so that's the problem this person doesn't believe that they're deserving of love so that's they tend to get in their own way so that they don't have to feel the hurt i don't have to if i don't give anything then you're not gonna hurt then you can't hurt me it's like if, you, if I don't give up myself, if I play these games and I drain your energy, it's like, yeah, you feel what you feel, but I'm always going to hide. I'm always going to hide. And that's because somebody was brought up in an environment where they weren't allowed to feel. You speak to me through music. So again, subconsciously, this person knows that they have shut you out. They know that they have rejected you. And they also know that it was a mistake. Um, but now it's like, well, now that I did that, how am I going to fix it? Like, this is how, like, the hole gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And the person doesn't do anything. And they don't do anything because, again, we're going to see why. Well, I should look at some spiritual blocks in between. So let's look at some spiritual blocks just to be like, how did this person treat you? Again, sadness, like, well, it's again, they brought in to their, they took out on you what they did not heal. That's the thing. It's like when, when people literally bring baggage into like their relationships, that's how they view the new relationship because they haven't done the healing, the integration. The integration is whatever we perceive as wounded, whatever is a shadow to actually, to look at it, to integrate it, to embody it, to like, and embody it means, yeah, you have to feel it. And then hopefully you have to move that energy through your body. Otherwise we see and manifest there's a lot of different uh, physical imbalances that create cancer and other horrible things.
again, self-righteous that again, this person overcompensated, like I said, because of how little they felt. So again, acted cocky, acted self-righteous. Like either you don't matter to me, you don't matter. So you, you, you have to give it to me. It's like, you have to prove to me. And then like, you know, but really they martyred themselves out to people that really, again, to keep up the facade, to keep up, you know, this fake facade. It's like they, you know, they'll seem like they're a really nice person, but they don't, that's not the life that they want to live. So this is how like people then tend to departmentalize. So let's look and see. Just, I'm afraid of commitment. Of course they are because they don't even, again, they're not, they don't trust themselves because the same thing keeps happening. So if you're someone that tends to get attracted to people that are not, that can't commit, we have to really dive deep into understanding what that is. Why? I can't give into temptation. It's again, they first that they feels like they're being strong. You know, and this is how, again, perception really can get distorted. And then when we overcompensate, I'm not going to give in. You know, it's like, I'm not going to give in to you, but I gave into temptation in every other place to fulfill my own needs is what that is. Like I gave into temptation. It's like, I feel like you were temptation, but it's because they was real love and real caring, but they were not capable of giving you what what you're deserving of. I find you incredibly attractive. Well, it's again, that's like soulmates, even when they're ones that we're not getting a good lesson from, <laughs> like meaning where the, there's love, but it's so dysfunctional that you can't be in it. It's like, well, I feel like the passion is and the and the attractiveness and the it is like um like that's what makes us stick around, right? Why why would you deal with it? Why would you deal with someone that triggers you? Why would you why why and why would this person come to you? It's again you know, the face. It's again that it's the persona is that is what a person like finds. So this person does for what they understand that love is problem is is that when people have this issue of creating facades instead of really coming from their true self their higher self then like i said it becomes all about creating what they think other people are going to perceive is attractive and people can feel when that's not genuine people don't like that energy they just don't like it and you no know, one should you know, because it's phony and what comes from phony is nothing good. It's again, it's a lower energy. You always have to come from the higher self. The higher self is God part of self and that's always coming from unconditional love. So we're actually always putting ourselves in someone else's shoes. So we always have empathy for a fellow man. That's the only way that we would have any type of sensitivity, any type of towards our fellow man. Otherwise you're only going to see divide over and over and over. And that's when the society becomes fragmented, when really we're held together by the same energy, love. Like, again, uh, I feel like, see, I see red flags, but in this, in this, it's like this person now sees you as a success, sees you like as your true self I feel like when you met this person they did not they didn't flag you it's again they they disregarded your feelings but I feel like you put the energy into yourself and it's again and gave yourself that love and that's why this person sees your achievements again death and that's this person is again in like realizes like they ruin the connection they ruin the connection they don't really 100 percent know why they ruin the connection again uh 
again, because they, yeah, they do. I actually could it because they didn't co-create, right? They didn't, that's, that's really what it is. It's again, collaborate. Um, in order to be in a healthy relationship, relationship, we have to learn how to compromise. And so if we're coming from a place of survival and we're always strategizing and making sure that we're ele elevated then, and then come across self-righteous, we're not actually in the relationship. We're in that facade. And this is done, again, not because the person wants to be that way. It's because they don't trust themselves. So and they don't trust themselves. And the thing is, they wouldn't have a problem hooking up with someone that they didn't really have genuine feelings for. It's like, I don't care. You give me what I want. I feel like almost like we're in a store, like I'm going in and buying a loaf of bread. You know, here's the bread, here's the money, peace out, see you around. Like I don't, might not even know who you are tomorrow instead of the real intimate type of relationships. It's again, when they feel that love, they get overstimulated. They shut it down because at some point they were taught not to feel, they were taught not to. So they wind up giving people too much of their time because they play the modern. Again, that makes them feel better. So that's important. It's again, the, the ego mind, is, it's, it's smart. It's say, well, I'm going to modern myself out so I actually feel better about what I, so I can stay dysfunctional. So I can stay dysfunctional because I don't really know how to compromise. I don't know how to do that without there being so much anxiety. So I'm always stuck in the past. It's again, sadness, that energy never gets integrated, but there's really only two energies, love and fear. So that's what we can do is say, well, we can ask what type of relationship is it? Is there any more information that we need to know? And also why would you attract this person? Like again, what needs to be healed with inside of you? You know, like otherwise you're going to continue to attract fragmented people. And then that's going to make you believe, again, I can't have love. It's because the, the, the spiritual lesson is not being learned. And so again, with the goal is to become unconditional love all the time. And our relationships are supposed to do that. So let's see what spirit has to say here. You think I'm not listening to you, but I am. I hear everything you say and even replay our conversations in, in my head. So this person, again, you do influence this person, but it's like, again, what good is it if you're not expressing? This person expects you to be able to mind read, you know? It's like, and that's because they, they give so little and think that it's so much because they're so afraid so that is again it's real, real distorted thing yeah again because their shield is up it's like again that's the problem there's like it's we can't receive love if we have our heart shielded off it's not just not gonna happen we're in a vibrational dissonance you're gonna push it so far away it's again that though this person will be like this is how we come into union though it's like and that's only if you're attracting toxic people so this person actually creates that self-fulfilling prophecy that they don't believe that they can have love and then they attract people that are really of a low vibe that create drama and create that false passion it's like counterfeit. It's it's like yeah. It's like maybe you're attracted. Maybe me again doing like some stuff in the bedroom, you know, and 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 get get our kicks on, you know, in 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 that. But then it's over. It's over. It's disposable. And so again, that for you it was because you didn't give, but not for this person. Oh, for that person, they're just as imbalanced as you are. You're going to get somebody that isn't going to let go of you because it's an energy thing. Like goes to like. So if you're giving a tiny bit, well, don't be surprised if you get a person that's like so obsessive that you're like, that's not my energy. And spirit says dysfunction goes to dysfunction. There's only two energies, love and fear. 
So it's again, playing games and then realizing that that's like really a toxic way of being, but how would this person really have known? That's why they're, they did that, that they know that they killed the relationship. We must remember that we are gods and goddesses and the work to embody that energy. So again, the relationship is all about getting back to a place of unconditional love, which this person feels the hurt even though they're not doing anything. So it's the, it, it, unfortunately, healing is like peeling an onion. You get to like one layer and then you're like, ah, I'm healed, I forgot about it. I look at my life, we justify. But really, as spirit says, you know, you know, that was not integrated and everybody has their walk. Everybody had their path. Everyone has their healing journey. You don't need to be a healer to be on a healer's journey. Everybody has one because it's how we come closer to the, our divinity. It's how we, it's our own unique path. It's our own unique individuality. It's the only thing that's going to fill us up truly, wholeheartedly, every day. It's the only thing that's perfect. Then you might be like, no, my spouse is perfect. Spirit will say, I don't make perfect. Only I am perfect. If you look at sacred geometry, everything in the planet is not perfectly, it's, that's not. We find our own beauty, our essence. It's the fact that we, there's a perception that it's not. And so we have to ask, what are the inner child wants? What do you need integrated? Because clearly, no one wants to be in a relationship like that. It's like it, it puts you in a place of feeling not loved. Again, guidance. There was no guidance. So, and so guidance isn't just being parented, which again, if parents were in trauma and they were so caught up in what had transpired in their life, they couldn't be there for you. So again, that means that you had figured out on your own and that's scary. And a lot of times we're coming from, from place of fear. So we're actually clothing down part of ourselves. And we, that doesn't mean that the person isn't a genius in other areas of life. That's, again, spirit uh, does it that way. You know, that's why we all have different talents and different strengths. And, uh, you know, and then we attract the people that have our type of energy. So, again, there was no guidance. The guidance was watching a bad relationship unfold over and over and over and over again. Keeping us stuck in place of, well, maybe I can't get love, or maybe I wind up giving too much and then I don't want to give anything at all. Or again, because again, shame, that's actually what happens when a person continues to fail within their relationships. Now, on some level, that came again from, from inner child, from, from that part of time because there was no guidance and again what was going on in the family was perceived as shame so we then may always strive to be perfect to be good enough to be to to be seen a certain way which listen no one want, needs you don't need to walk around looking crazy however it's like we can't get caught up in the persona of what things look like because then it's not real. It's not, it's like, we don't need to expose every part of ourselves, but we don't need to be completely shut down. It's like finding balance is the key to integrating shame. It's like finding ourselves, meaning you weren't allowed to find your process because you were too busy, like, concerned about about protecting the family protecting because that's what people do when they grow up in a very dysfunctional home it's like it's not that they don't love they love trust me they love and they wish that they, they didn't love that's why they show up and they go go and they fix and they do but they're like i really don't want to do this it's like why am i doing this and it's like because that was your role the fixer. So if you're the fixer, you've abandoned yourself on some level. And so we'll, again, you can only be the fixer when it comes to being balanced, that you're fixing yourself at the same time. That is not that you're neglecting yourself to fix someone else. 
it's again because they're a physical touch and I always take that as like emotional like they you didn't have the emotional support there wasn't there wasn't that nurturing and when there isn't that nurturing again you need guidance. Guidance isn't just, oh, I'm going to hold you, but it's like, hey, listen, you know what you need to do? It, it is, or let me show up for you. Let me encourage you. Let me show you how life could actually be. Let me, let me change those things. It's like that, whatever you perceive that's imbalanced. It's guidance. Guidance. It's like I had to figure it out on my own. And it's like, and because of that, I like, I have a lot of bruises because I haven't really integrated that spiritual, those spiritual blocks. So that's what spirit's saying. It's like, so how would you uh, integrate those spiritual blocks, spirit? We say, because really there's no point unless we integrate the spiritual lesson. In other ways, we stay blocked. Now, remember, you are your own healer, so I can only create the awareness. You must actually ground the awareness in a new behavior, a new action, a new environment. And A, you might have to find what that actually is, you know? You might need to allow your process to just unfold. That card didn't belong in that. That was one before I came into temptation. Uh, again, uh, oh, see, mother load. See, it's again, mother load. Oh, like, it's like, first of all, the first thing that I thought of here is, again, the mother connection to the earth. Connection to the earth is mother earth. It's not just, you know, your ancestry. And so when we do this, we actually have good fortune is the mother load. See, at first what jumped out at me is mother and I was back by my intuition and mother is like, well, in order to heal it, it's like there's a disconnect from the physical world. However, the child that's five thrives. And so it needs to be, again, integrated and i feel like you're moving into that because you're going to give your energy to again finally yourself and so when you do that it's again you're actually transmuting spiritual blocks because you're giving yourself the self-love that you didn't get you're returning back to source you again embody that energy and that's through Again, putting your and being grounded to Mother Earth, and that means by doing what you love, connecting to who you love, by by realizing that you only have so much time, energy, focus, and money, and if you focus those resources that you have, which would be the magician card in the tarot, like when you see that he's got all those tools on on his table well that's what that means that you have everything that you need the perception is that you don't the perception is how little you bank on yourself how little like you've done for yourself so again the mother load is actually like we're seeing abundance and so this is real transmutation. Transmutation is taking that spiritual block and integrating it and integrating it by doing something different. So anything else of that one top that it's easy. Yes, I realized, but again, intuition. So fortress, again, staying in your own power, staying in your power. To me, that's what it's about. It might, you might be someone that tends to give in to again other people's feelings and emotions again that, that that can affect you which is possible if like i said you don't have a strong sense of self so there may be a physical reaction that happens when you get into those situations because again the body holds on to the energy right? Your body is your mind's faithful servant. So if you were taught something over and over and over and over and over again, anxiety a lot of times just comes on the intuition and we don't really even know why at first. So staying in your power means having a backbone like that, that would pop out at me, right? The backbone, <laughs> but really it's like, you just need to have boundaries, 
So you, again, might have been someone that was always like a little bit of a pushover and spirit saying like, you can't do that. It's like, you have to love yourself enough to know that you're worthy of the life and the life experiences that you want to have. And that is like how you really transcend that. So we also can ask spirit like, well, now that I was connected to someone like this, hey, <laughs> can you be made me feel well bad but now it should make you feel better because like what spirit saying like keep on your track because it's coming um but there's always spiritual energy that we tend to need to integrate in order to stay at that vibrational frequency because the situations that come into our life and go out of our life it can feel like a roller coaster it's like wow this person or like i did this or this happened in our own mind and depending on how much healing you have to do can really keep you in a place of like negativity if you don't integrate it. So let's take a peek and see. Choice. I choose serenity, light, and positive energy no matter what I go through. I choose happiness. I rise above fear and direct my thoughts towards God. So again, I feel like it's a choice to be happy. It's difficult when you, again, are trying to manifest and you're dealing with life and dealing with your own everyday process. You have to remember, like I like, said, focus on the good patches in life, the happy times, where we want to go and to continue and not let other people take our energy from us regardless of whatever the situation is. Being true, by being true to yourself, you actually are truer to others. Again, being true is removing that mask. And that's what we see here. Like this person like needs to like remove that mask because it says I replace shame because that's what we got before too, right? I replace shame with the power of love and truth. So it's not that this person doesn't care. It's that they do care. We saw that. But they don't, they're not open to that process until like of love, their own process, because they haven't figured it out yet. And you might say, when you mean figured it out? Well, if the person is always overcompensating and coming from that mask because they have shame, well, they're not ever obviously going to be able to give you what you need. And so and you deserve it. Understand that like no one's going to give you greatness. You got to get up and just take it sometimes and not care. It's like it's that's, that's actually a spiritual walk. And I'm going to leave that there. If you want to enter into winning a free reading with me, don't forget to write the word in the video in your comment bar. I don't remember what it was. You'll have to rewind the video. All right. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.